Hello there and welcome to a little sort of a video slash tutorial slash review on Navigraph, the uh, software you've seen here. If we take a look over on the internet, it's uh, based at Navigraph.com. So full disclosure here, it is a subscription based sort of a software. I assume you already know that if you're sort of taking a look at this just to find out a little bit more. I have been using it for a couple of years. I have always had to pay for it. I have never been given any sort of discount, any sponsorship. And so this video is going to be a full, honest, frank review of it, what it can and what it can't do. Um, so let's get right into it. So once you have set up an account here on the uh, website, um, you sort of create your account, you sign in. You pay a, a sort of a monthly fee and there's no uh, sort of a contract there. So if you only want to use it one month and you decide it's not for you or whatever, you can obviously do that. And that gives you access to everything here. So it's a sort of a, a thing as well as it updates your um, your local or what would you call it? The, uh, you know, the file that goes into your... Um, into your FMC that updates all the waypoints. And I forget, I can't believe it's, oh, the IRAC cycle. That's what it's called, the IRAC cycle. So you could potentially just pay for one month, get all your stuff updated and have a good look round and then leave it. And then you've got the latest, uh, all, all the latest stuff and it updates for everything. Uh, there's like a whole range of aircraft and simulations, be it Flight Sim 2020, X-Plane, uh, prepared 3D and a whole bunch of modules uh, within that. So let's get on with it then. So that's enough babble. So if we come over to the Navigraph itself here and we can see uh, that my mouse is actually missing. Let me just see if uh, there we go. Capture cursor and now we can see my mouse. OK, fantastic. Start off, uh, this is the sort of view that you'll be greeted with. Uh, typically, uh, it starts over the New York area in America. You've got three map views. You've got the so-called high en route mode. You've got the low. And then you've got the actual world map itself. Now, you can zoom in up to a point. So if we use, um, if we use New York as an example, we can see we can zoom in and that's it now. It won't let me zoom in any further. And that's because clearly it's not designed to be used to navigate along the streets. Although I guess if you were really to squint your eyes, you maybe just could about. But in any case, that's what it is. But because we're going to be using it for flying, this would be more um, understandable. So here, if we look at the low routes, you can maybe see there's a bit of difference between low and high. You can see some of these airways uh, are slightly different. For example, at low, we've got Victor 451 airway here. And if we uh, deselect, uh, if we come off that a second, go onto the high, we see it's missing. Of course, we're talking high en route. Uh, th these are your sort of 30,000 feet kind of things that your airlines will be doing. And your low is going to be your, your Cessnas when you're in IFR type conditions. Now, Airlines clearly fly along these lines the majority of the time. That doesn't mean that you have to do. The other thing of note, and this is uh, great to use when it is nighttime, um, either in real life or if you're flying in your simulator, because this runs just the same on the tablet or even your phone, your smartphone, as it does on the desktop, uh, to have the day and night is, uh, is very important because there's a huge difference between the two, especially when, again, as we're saying, it is nighttime. But for now, I'm just going to leave it on the daytime setting. And let's take a look, first of all, at creating a flight. Now, you can import the flights. There are various ways that you can do that. But we're actually going to use the software scene as that's what this reviews around. And we can pick literally anywhere. So if we zoom in carefully, we can see here we've got these blue, uh, these sort of blue icons. These are all airports. And we can see we get a bit of basic information just by clicking on them. In this case, we've got Kilo Delta Whiskey X-Ray. We see that's Dixon Airfield in WI. Is that Wyoming? US. I have to forgive me. I'm not from the US. We see the elevation there of the airfield is six and a half thousand feet, uh, basically two kilometers. We see that the longest runway at this particular airfield is seven thousand feet. We see it's a public style uh, aircraft and it is IFR capable. 
also gives us the uh, magnetic variation there. And if we click on runways, it just gives us a brief overview of the main runways. In this case, it looks like there's only two, runway 8 and runway 24. Now we can click this icon here to get a whole bunch more charts. We'll take a look at that in a little while. But for now, let's just look at creating the flight. I want to choose this one. I'm going to choose one of the uh, main airports uh, to do this just so that we can really see what this is around. Uh, so we got here, we've got San Francisco International KSFO, and that's the one that I'm going to be using. And so when we click here, here's the San Francisco. See there, it's got a very long runway, uh, basically 12,000 feet. Uh, you know, the 12,000 footers were the ones that were designed to handle the 747s back in the day. And so with KSFO, that's one. And then for my destination, I think we're going to use this one here, Los Angeles International, KLAX. So there's, uh, again, even though we we're creating it ourselves, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. We can manually create it or we can ask uh, the, the machine to auto-gen. Uh, so let's go through them both here. You see there's a bunch of my prior flights there. Let's just go for a new flight and I'm going to do a manual input. And here we see the origin. So we can just go so KSFO and there we see it, San Francisco over to KLAX. And then there's a couple of options here, such as any alternates. We don't have to put them in, but we can do. Let's just do that. We'll put in KLAS, which is uh, at Las Vegas over there. And then here is going to be the name of the flight. I'll leave that as default. And here we've got the option then to auto-gen it. We've got the uh, standard IFR as well as the uh, airline mode. Not entirely sure what the difference between the two is, but I just like to go airline mode because that is the way that I, you know, like to fly in the sim. Uh, so to begin with, um, let, let, let's leave it at that and then we'll auto-gen uh, afterwards. So you see it just creates a, a sort of a dotted line between the two. That's because it's not a proper flight plan. And you see there, it is simply KSFO and then a direct to KLAX. And you see there the 294, that's indicating it's 294 nautical miles from point to point. Now, if you if you was wanting to update this yourself, for example, you may choose. Um, typically, you're going to be jumping onto an airway uh, somewhere. Uh, so let's, for example, go with Woodside. You see here it's 1390 OSI. And again, we just click on it. And we see it here. We see it's a VOR beacon with distance measuring on 13.9 and we just click add to the route now because there was no other waypoints it knows to put that into the middle so now it's ksfo direct to osi and then from there direct to klax so still not exactly what you'd have but let's now say for example we want to come onto this point here this sns uh, beacon so we'll click on that it's a vortac we see it's 17 decimal three we'll add that onto the route and now we get the option here. Do we want it before or after the uh, OSI? Well, clearly it's afterwards. Uh, so we'll click after OSI. OK. And now we're starting to see the standard solid line. So we've got the dotted line there. Here we got the solid line. And then once again, the dotted line all the way to the airport. Ideally, you don't want any dotted lines at all, but it's just because we're still making the plan. Now what you see, we've got this airway here the Juliet 126 or the Juliet 6 and also the Juliet 88. So there's a whole bunch of airways on top of one another here. And there's a bunch of air, air, uh, uh, waypoints along the way. So here, for example, we've got one goalie. And if we carry on, um, we can see over here is another uh, is there another ND, uh, sorry, another VOR, which takes us pretty much to the end of the airway here. Although we do actually see the airway then continues around. If we look, it's the Juliet 126. Here's also the Juliet 126. And that takes us all the way over to this beacon here, which is probably going to be the Los Angeles. And it is, there we see. It's the LAX VOR, which is 13.8. So let's add that into the route as well. And this time we want it to be after the SNS. OK. And now we see we've got this line here. It's not yet following the airway because we've not told it to we see here it's a direct it's sns direct to lax so if we want to follow the airway we just simply type something in so if we look here for example out of there 
we've got the Juliet 126 and that continues on around the corner. So I'm probably thinking we can get the J126 in there. So let's try changing uh, the direct. So if we come over to type, we see this thing here is typed out in text form. And there we see SNS. There we see LAX. And here's the direct. So if we change this to Juliet 126 and then save, now you can see it snaps that route onto the airway and it puts all the intermediate waypoints in on our behalf. So we've just got SNS, we've got the Juliet 126 and then all the individual waypoints. When you are uh, given this then as the final brief, you won't be given all these individual waypoints. You'll just get, uh, as we saw, SNS, Juliet 126, getting off at LAX. So that's one little way of creating a flight. And let's now also look at editing a flight and the way that we're going to do that. I'm just going to completely uh, clear this out. OK, and we'll unload the route as well. Uh, if we come over to the flight, let's unload that route. Let's now use the auto gen and we'll create a new flight and we'll go from somewhere else entirely. Uh, let's go KORDs for Chicago O'Hare and let's go over to JFK. And I'm going to auto gen this one. We see we've got a couple of options here just for high and low. Again, airlines were going to be on the high routes. So let's click OK. And here we see auto gen doing its thing. We see we've got an, an initial departure here. And the first waypoint uh, is going to be this one here, which we see is known as Cubs. If we click on it, we can go directly over that point. And then we're following airways and we'll be going if we look over here all the way over to LVZ, which is uh, this one here. And that's the last uh, waypoint. And then it's direct to JFK. You may think, yeah, but that's not really realistic because there's things known as SIDs and STARS and you'll find those on the airport charts. And that's exactly right. And that's really, in my opinion, where the money that you're paying for in this subscription, this is where it's for. I've tried to compare this with real flight subscriptions to try and see is there any difference because you do get messages on here not to be used for real world navigation you see that here on almost every page honestly there is no difference that i can find i'm not saying that there isn't one somewhere i cannot find a difference right down to the individual temporary notams of each individual airfield everything seems to be there in any case let's get on with this so First of all, let's, uh, let's I did say about modifying something. So let's just for argument's sake say we want to change this here. But Al uh, Alfie. So let's try find the waypoint at uh, this one here, Alfie, which is here. We want to then come down here and then across. So we would just um, click on here. We see it's uh, called Carlton and we'll add that into the route. And we want to insert that after this Alfie point. So we'll select Alfie and insert that. And then you see we've got all these dud points here. Well, we're just going to clear those out. And I'm just going to do like delete. And we've got um, dunks, delete, 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 delete. Delete, delete, and now we're here. So again, Alfie, uh, why did that one clear out? Did I accidentally delete it? So again, after Alfie adds that one in, and now you can see we've got the waypoint here to Alfie, and rather than following the Juliet 70, which I guess clearly we would, but let's just assume that there was a block of uh, no-fly zone, temporarily no-fly zone put in here, we might then jump from Juliet 70 over to the uh, Juliet 34. You can see it's auto-filled that in for us. And then from Carlton, it's over to Jamestown. See, for some reason, it's not decided to autofill that one in, so we can change that. So if we come over to uh, Carlton here, and we change the direct, we see there the airway is Juliet 554. So let's just, can we, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just type it in. It's much easier. So we've got CRL, CRL, yeah. And then the uh, Juliet 554. 
and then that's going to take us direct to JHW, which is Jamestown here. So we'll click save, and now you see that's uh, been amended there. There does seem to be a bit of a discrepancy here with something, so I'm sure I've made a mistake. So if we cycle along, um, Alfie, uh, sorry, uh, move left, made a mistake there. And, oh no, it seems to have updated it. I think it was just a, a temporary little uh, graphical glitch with too many modifications, but it's all looking okay now. Not noticed that one before. So there we've made an amendment. Let's now look first of all at the departures. So if we come over to O'Hare here, we see its origin here. We've got all the different runways. Now we can choose from the runways here. And of course O'Hare's got a whole bunch of them. And then we've got the departures. Now interestingly, at least I find so, O'Hare doesn't have any prescribed departures. It's all per ATC instructions on the day, which is kind of unique at least i think so but in any case if we click on o'hare here and we open the charts this is where the money is you see there's a whole bunch of them for taxiing alone and if we look on the arrivals it does have a bunch of arrivals it's got a whole load of approaches because of how many runways there are and each one of these is a full chart we'll take a look at some of them we see on the standard index departure if we take a look here again there's nothing really prescribed it's just everything's as per, you know, initial climb, expecting radar vectors. So basically, you know, there's nothing. All aircraft cross something at or above 3,000, cross a certain arc. So you see they're wanting you to be above 3,000 by this 5.5 mile arc. And again, from this, you see that here, it's distance 5.5 from GCO and here's GCO, 108.25. And then it wants you to be... Uh, Top altitude 5,000 wants you to be above 4,000 by the 8.5 mile arc. Um, so very simple departure. And again, uh, if we take a look, where were we going to? Our first waypoint up here was to Cubs. We've got some uh, obstacle notes here. And again, this is all real world stuff. Again, that you, you're unlikely to have a, a simulator where you've got a pole um, 1,026 from the departure end of the runway. 554 feet right of the center line. It's just, uh, it's very precise information. Again, this is a uh, real world stuff. See, there's a uh, further uh, notes there. In any case, that's there. Let's just assume that we've been given runway 32 uh, based on the weather. Is it 32 left and right? Or maybe I'm, I'm sure there was a 32. I must be thinking a different airport. Okay, let's go with uh, 27 left. And so that's what you'd put in Chicago, 27 left, and then it's direct to Cubs. If we take a look actually on the approach page, and if we come down here and look for 27 left, here we've got the ILS info for 27 left. So clearly this is the approach side. Here we've got uh, the missed approach procedure, and you can see it's uh, to carry on a heading of 265 and then intercept uh this particular radial here, CGT 307, and there's the frequency, direct to a radar fix called WASCO, W-A-S-C-O. Now, again, if we come off the chart here, we don't see the fix W-A-S-C-O, but that doesn't mean you can't type it in. So, for example, after runway 27, you may want to go direct to there. So after runway 27, we'll go uh, w a s c o and if we uh, now save that you can see it does actually put the waypoint in even though it's not shown on this particular chart here so you can well do that and then just for example uh decide uh you know what that we're going to go this way so insert after what uh what's go there we go and once again we've been through this before and then maybe we want to go to uh, northbrook here so we'll add another one after bam bang there we go. OK, so that's there. We've got the departure. Let's now look at the arrivals again. That's probably not the best example for a departure just because Chicago O'Hare is so unusual. So here we've got JFK. What I like is if we press on this I symbol here, it lets us see all the available arrivals for any specific runway. In this case, if we were to if, if we knew based on the weather or whatever that we were to expect runway four left, 
then these are all the suitable arrivals that Spitz has out uh, somewhere that is suitable for four left. And if we were to change this to example to runway uh, one three left, we can see, OK, in this example, they're pretty much the same. Uh, one three right, uh, two two left. You see there's a couple of minor changes, but nothing uh, there's three one left. Yeah, you just uh, very, very small changes. Three one right. So really not much between them. Let's just assume that runway four left it is OK. Uh, so what you typically do is you'd come on to the arrival or even on the approach. Let's choose that one in. So let's say it's ILS four left so we can select that one. And if we now click on the arrivals, it's only going to give us again suitable arrivals. And at the very top is the most suitable one. And in this case, it's saying the Lendy 7 arrival. Why Lendy 7 arrival? Because I guarantee you LVZ is its first place. And again, we can look at the charts. So if we click, if we click on the JFK icon here, open the charts list on the uh, arrivals here. Here we see this Lendy 7. So let's just click on that before we accept. And indeed, take a look at that. The first waypoint on the star is LVZ, the last waypoint on our route. And so if we stick if we stick that one in, we can see that's going to take us all the way potentially to the uh, VOR LaGuardia. And then I'm sure there'll be an arrival on from there. But for now, of course, we can also uh, pin these. And these are all temporarily for each of the flights. So what I'd suggest is you pin every... Uh, every page suitable. So what uh, what was the uh, what was the approach that we said? Runway four left. So if we come over here, runway four left, and look at the charts here, you may say, yeah, okay, we'll pin that one in. And we've also got potentially we've got RNAV approaches as well as well as VOR. So you've got the different types of approaches, whatever's available at that airport and that particular runway. You can see. Uh, We've also got the Belmont visual here for 2-2 two, two left, um, something, and uh, they also got some of the newer ones like in um, airports that have the new GLS system, all stuff like that is all in there. And you can see, for example, the Arnav Yankee on runway 31 has got two different uh, transitions here. We've got Pazulu and Carmine here, so or Deer Park VOR. In any case, Let's carry on with this. So again, we said the Lendy 7. And now you look, rather than getting a dotted line, we get this green line that basically overlays where that star was. Now you can overlay that information as well. If we come to the star and click on Lendy here, we can change the view mode. Uh, which one is it? Um, overlay on the route. And there you can see it overlays the chart onto the map. Not really the most useful thing ever, I don't find, because it's sort of you know both things are getting in the way of each other you can change the opacity a bit but again it's just one of the options that's there i prefer to view it like this and i do like that this whole app integrates with the uh, avi tab in x plane that just allows you to look at this in pretty much the same way that i'm doing now so here we have the arrival and again the arrival ends at klga there and then here we can see we've got the uh, suitable transitions um, so we've got JFK or um, the Arnav Zulu. Um, none of these, ba none of these are coming exactly out of the uh, the star there. If we look at Parch three, there's there's a, again an entirely different one. So again, all of these uh, vary. We've got the Parch two rubber. Um, we can change all of these. Again, it's whatever ATC gives you on the day. I'm just showing here that you can, you know, if you set up for one and then at some point, I don't know, they change you over to this one. You can do that. It may leave an old ghost waypoint like this. For example, we never put Sandy Point in. We were always at LVZ, but Sandy Point was the beginning of the other one. All that you do is you come over here, parch, you see, parch, just delete that out. And then it's going to update it like the sound. OK, so with that done, let's uh, let's have another look at uh, a departure. Do you know what? We might as well just choose JFK. And so let's unload that. So let's create a new flight and manual. OK, JFK, seeing as I wasn't really able to demo this before. And let's just go down. Um, oh, KIAD. Bang. 
we'll just sort of generate it for the sake of time. Because it's actually a very short flight and all the rest of that is already on the arrival. But for now, the way that I would do this is I would, uh, I would, I would open the charts list. And always to begin with when I start the flight is I come over to the airport info page, this one. This is going to give you a top down of any runway. It's usually a 10-9, but some airports are 20s, some are 30s, and some even are 40s. I'm not entirely sure what the significance of that, either it being a 10-9, a 20-9. But in any case, whatever you want is the dash 9. Here we can see the, the different lengths of the runway, and importantly a map. Now, if you are in the sim, it will overlay a little red icon where your aircraft is, and you'll see it next to one of these uh, gates or wherever it is that you are starting up or taxiing at the, at the time. You can see we've got all the uh, all the markings here. We see, for example, Lima, Lima Alpha there. We've got Mike, Mike Alpha, Mike Bravo. We've got all the different taxiways there. The, the buildings are marked. But... One of the things, especially if you're flying old school, I know the new ones do it all for you with GPS and everything. But if you are old school and need to know the exact position when you begin, if we take a look here, we've got the parking gates. We see we've got all the info here. And if we come over to where are we here, we've got the parking coordinates. So based on whichever gate you're at, here you've got your norths and your wests in the, uh, as it is for New York. And these are the coordinates that you'd want to program into your INS system. So I find myself uh, referring to this a lot, especially when I'm flying the uh, old school aircraft like the uh, 747-200 by Fearless, uh, that kind of stuff. So all that info is uh, in there. And again, you've got the more precise maps zoomed in. And again, you've got the approved taxi routes in this case for the A380. Yeah, and this is all real world stuff. You know, there's nobody sat there writing this stuff for the sake of a sim. Uh, nobody cares that taxiway A between this has a speed restriction of 17 knots for an A380. You know, <laughs> nobody is writing that for the sake of a sim. This is taken from uh, real world stuff here. We've got the uh, 747-8 approved taxi routes. And in this case, we're looking at the prohibited uh, prohibited simultaneous crossings with any other aircraft types. So in other words, uh, the 747-8 is uh, solo when it's on these uh, yellow bits. And then here we've got a few other uh, large, large aircraft, including the uh, Airbus A340-600, which is on there. Here we see where turns are not allowed, and you see there's a whole bunch of them. Interestingly, that the uh, 748 would not have the turns not allowed, but the uh, A340-600 would, but doesn't have the cart cross side by side here, so. Don't know, that's something for New York ground. Perhaps Kennedy Steve might want to look into that. <laughs> Take a look at the approaches again in a bit more detail. This is what approach charts look like. In this case, we've got the ILS for runway four left. So we'll be starting from this point here, flying this way. And runway four left is this one here. This dotted line clearly is if we miss and have to go around. That's the that's the way that we need to follow. And uh, I don't know for those that don't know, but you can see down here we've got the altitude. So when you're joining this point here, Baroque, this fix, you see its distance 11 miles from IHIQ. IHIQ is the identifier here for the ILS DME. In this case, the runway that we're landing at, which is a 04 left. So you can see when we're 11 miles away, which is this fix here, we need to be 2000 feet. And then we're on a heading of 044 degrees, which you see is here. And in fact, it's straight in from that point. We descend. We've got six miles to do it in to be 1500 feet by crystal. And there we see the crystal fix there. Radar fix, which is five miles away from IHIQ. We also see that re re reproduced here. We've got um, distance five from IHIQ. There we see uh, we've got then that uh, approach angle which is, we see here, three degrees. So that's the standard approach. Here we see the range to the runway. So we've got 3.4. And so we've got the uh, visual missed approach point here. And then after that, it's another 1.2 miles down to the runway. And that's here. And you see it's, uh, it's about 57. So following this brings you over the threshold by uh, 57 feet, which is fairly standard. You know, it's not quite the 50 feet, but it's 57 over the piano keys. 
Here you see the recommended altitudes should the glide slope be out. So at four miles, you want to be uh, 1190 feet, three miles, 870 and so forth. There's also some other information here. Again, all of these are standard on every single one. So in this case, if you're doing a ground speed of 160 knots, based on that, on the three degree approach profile, you'll be wanting to find a vertical speed of about 850 feet a minute if you're doing 160 over the ground. Here we got the uh, minimums, so you see it's 223 feet, which is 210 on the radio altimeters, and that's if the if your condition C or D, which will be if you're landing on this room, I see will be your 737s and so on. Your Ds are going to be your 747s, your A380s and stuff like that. And there you can see that for the conditions, so fairly low. And there you can see uh, one and three eighths, <laughs> so a very strange measurement there, one and three eighths of a mile. Um, you can also legally land without a glide slope. Clearly, if uh, the weather is worse visibility than 138 miles and the glide slope's out, this is a no-go. You can't do it. You've got to go for this. Here you've got the circle to land in for. So again, you said you can come down to 680 feet, which would be so fun to do at JFK, right? Imagine coming down here at 680 feet and... Uh, well, I, I guess uh, actually there doesn't seem to be a restriction over which way around you can do it. So you could potentially come in on this runway here or this runway. At least uh, that's the way it would uh, imply here. Usually it says uh, you can't do a circle to land on the west side of the airfield or something like that. Some of the other info, if we take a look here, this is your missed approach stuff here. So if you miss approach, fly straight on, climb to 2000 feet. So that's going to be this dotted line here. Then a right turn continuing to climb up to 3,000 feet. So that's going to be this bit here. And then direct onto the JFK 062 degree radial. And that's what you see here. 062 out of the JFK uh, VOR. And you're going to continue then straight onto Duffy at the prescribed 3,000 feet. And you're going to go onto Duffy, which you see there's 14.8 miles from JFK on this radial. And then you've got a hold there. So automatically you know what you're going to do if things go wrong that's without atc saying a thing clearly they're probably going to get on the horn to you before then and tell you to do something else but if they don't there's what you do and that's of course known as the missed approach fix and again so all of that is there you've got some additional instructions here such as the transition flight level which in us is fairly standard to be at flight level 180 of course much lower here in the uk typically two three thousand feet uh, we've got the uh, radar required for procedure entry. So, you know, this is not a visual thing. We've got DME or radar required only for the localizer. Simultaneously approach authorized. So you could have people on left and right at the same time. Here you've got the uh, VGSI and ILS glide path. Not so coincidence. So in other words, your visual glide slope indicators and your ILS are not necessarily going to match exactly. And you can see there, there's a slight discrepancy by about 75 feet once you're at the uh, late stages. Um, so whether you're following the instruments or following the visual uh, cues, uh, that's just something to be aware of, that they are going to diverge by about 75 feet, which, of course, you ain't going to notice until you're in close. Again, here you've got the missed approach instructions, uh, the same uh, that we described there, just written out in a slightly different form. And again, yeah, the frequencies, the approach headings. Again, so all of that info is there together with the airport elevation, 13 feet, which is also the same in this case as the uh, touchdown zone, 13 feet. It's uh, They're not often that they identically match. Sometimes your runway is going to be 10, 20 feet higher or lower than the uh, airport, uh, the middle of the airfield, right? And oftentimes there's a slight slope on a runway, but not in this case. And again, if you want to know how long this runway is, you just come over to the taxi page, come over to the 29. And again, we were discussing far left here and here we see it's 12,079 feet long, which is 3,682 meters. And there you got again, the exact runway heading 044, which is, of course, no surprise because that was the uh, approach there. If we take a look, 044. OK, so that's that. And again, for the SIDS, which is something that we didn't see. So let's have a look at one of the more interesting ones. Um, these five again so some of these are again it seems to be a little bit different for these very busy ones but at least there's a little bit of something here so this is the d's five uh 
departure again it's an RNAV so not for the old schools let's assume we're taking off on this runway here which is going to be runway 31 right and you can see so the initial climb is going to be 5,000 feet so we're going to climb on 314 which is runway heading to intercept course 242 direct to score here we see score how do we know that that's in line well because we be need to be RNAV uh, compatible yeah there doesn't seem to be any beacon that helps us there so we climb until we turn left and head direct to score on a heading of 242 degrees and then onto track 183 so that's from here to here to cross CSID at or above 2500 feet and that's why we've got this 25 with the blue line underneath because we need to be at or above 2500 and again the top height is uh, 5000 so we're going to be somewhere between those two figures and then it's on to Yankin we can see we've got the distance there which is in this case 3.5 miles from score to CSID on a heading of 183 and then it's 4.4 from there to Yankee on a heading of 172 degrees and then it's out from Yankee on a one heading of 172 or as assigned by ATC so basically expect vectors to D's then track 295 to here or maintain 5000 expect clearance to filed altitude flight level within 10 minutes after departure which is a fairly standard uh, text on most of these we can see there's a load of uh, existing departures that used to be here that have been cancelled in the latest up changes i actually remember the bt1 um so again they're doing away with the departures here we've got an interesting one so to get up to this point here you're probably expecting atc instructions perhaps from these departures here there's no direct line. You're going to be uh, expecting radar vectors. So here you see, for example, on 22 left, it is climbed 224 degrees or as assigned by ATC. And then once you get here again, you've got the info here. So if there's a hold, I don't know why you'd be holding on a departure, but potentially you could be. And then you're on D's again here. So you've got the height. So uh, you've got a minimum there of 8,000 feet. And there's the distance, 11,000 feet. Uh, 15,000 feet and then uh, over here so that's the whole thing and uh, yeah it's uh, it's a very great thing a couple of the uh, very strongly recommended to use this with is of course Simbrief and of course like, like, let me just show why because again when we go type root you can select that copy it and import that anywhere you could also just type it directly into your FMC if you don't want to bother with something like Simbrief. You've got your route here, so you've got JFK, and you just write that down, CRI, then Lauren, onto the uh, Quebec 22 Airway, RBV, and then into KIAD. Well, in this case, we didn't go through the arrival, but again, if we click on the I, we can see here there is only one suitable, because again, this is our last waypoint here. This is a direct. So... This is the suitable one. So we would click on that and here you can see it's suitable for these runways. Um, and we can also click on this to view the individual icons here. So we would certainly pop that one in to our plan. And then it's just whichever runway. So let's just assume that we're going to be uh, landing on runway 19 center and approach oh so 19 left looks like is the ideal one let's uh, get rid of that screen so now you can see previously it was a direct line from here now we've got a nice green line that's the arrival and again if we take a look here open the charts list the one that we're on is the uh, hyper 8 so if we come where are we We show the chart here this is the uh this is the star the arrival so that was our waypoint there mxe and then it's coming over here and then again it splits off which one do we require well it depends on which our approach is so let's just uh put the uh, pin on there and what were we talking we were talking ils runway 19 left you see here we've got this daddy we come back over to the uh hyper 8 uh, hang on, sorry, the approach. What did we say? I've already forgotten. 
19 left. So on the approach, we're looking for 19 left. So we come over to the ILS here. I'll just pin that. And again, then I can just click on them down here and easily switch between the two. So if we start on the 19 left, we see there's a whole be coming down here there's a whole bunch of information but essentially daddy is where we're coming in from and if we uh, click on the rnav here and there's hyper which one would we take uh, let's have a look see if we can figure it out Daddy 3000. And I've, I really would expect to see Daddy somewhere here. Might it be after fat? Because these two are taking you around. There's the airport. These two are taking you around the other side. In case you were to come from this way. I'm going to guess it's after fat. Usually they uh, join up. Here we can see there's a few different ones. Um, could potentially come in from MRB. There's the missed approach in case uh, you go wrong. Daddy. I'm surprised I'm not seeing it on here. Ah, there we go. So here's Hyper. I guess there's too much information to put it on. So here we go. So we come over. We're following it this way. Should have looked there before. Here we see that the information we need to be at 14,000 feet. Now we saw butts because there's a blue line above and below by Lurch. 10,000 feet. Now we saw butts at Hyper at 250 knots. And then we'll be following this one because, again, we need to be at Daddy, if you remember that. Because again, we're running into runway 19 left, and that begins at waypoint daddy. If we look at the approach, runway 19 left is that's the first waypoint. And conveniently, it's the last waypoint of the start, which is how it should be. So we need to be 10,000 feet at 250 at hyper, which we know because that's there. And then we're going to continue on here. So there we need to be at or below 5,000 feet by Oogle. We need to lose that in 17.7 .7 miles. So there's going to be no messing around there. Might even need a bit of speed break. Depends. We need to be at lighty at 4,000 feet. Again, no ifs or buts. Yeah, it's usually when there's more than three uh, miles for 1,000 feet, it's usually because they want you to start slowing down, especially here. If this is 4,000, this is 4,000, there's three miles. Again, they're thinking, especially in busy airspace, they don't want the engines needlessly revving. This will be using that three miles to slow down. And you see it's at Yang. Then you've got 4.7 miles to get down to Daddy. 3,000 or above, expect the ILS or localizer for 19 left. Well, that's clearly the case because that is what's coming next. Again, so we're spitting out Daddy, 3,000 feet. So we come over here and there we see it. Daddy, 3,000 or above, remember. We've got two miles to go until Izumo, where it is 3,000 feet. We've then got 10.4 miles uh, to lose down to 1,700 and then again, here we've got that three degree uh, this time going uh, the other way. So the standard three degree approach on a heading of 191. Once again, it's got three miles. There's our visual missed approach point there. And then another 1.2 down, down to the threshold. In this case, bringing us in 55 feet over the piano keys and touchdown zone is 302 feet uh, in. And again, here we've got the... Uh, You've got, got the minimums, which, which makes sense. Okay, so we've got 200 feet on the radar. There's 502, and of course the difference is the 302 feet there. Yeah, we've got the minimums here, so you can see down to half a mile on full. Category C and D, three quarters of a mile if the uh, ALS is out, so that's the uh, lighting systems. And uh, if the light slopes out, the minimum pushes up to 740 feet, which is 438 on the radar. And again, we've got higher minimums there as well, which is to be expected. And again, here we've got the whole thing. So we've got the uh, pappies and a little diagram there. The way that's the that's the sort of lighting to to expect at that runway. Again, pappies on the left hand side. 
Again, if you mess up straight ahead to 800 feet, then left hand turn 300 degrees onto a heading of 010 degrees heading and direct to AML on the 040 radial. So if we take a look at that, you go wrong, you climb to 800, you left turn to 3000 feet onto a heading of 010, which is up here, and then follow the 040 radial to AML. Well, here's AML. There's zero four zero degrees, and that's what you're looking to intercept. You, you're expected to be up there three thousand feet, and then you're going to to hold there again until further instructions. Anyway, I hope that uh, rounds that one up nicely. Until next time, take care. Bye. -bye.